John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on the equals method in Java or you can call it dot equals um, since all methods have a dot in front of them if you like and I really should have covered this much earlier in the course uh, in fact I started to but then I that that video didn't work out somehow and I forgot about it so I'm going to cover it now um, and I need to ask your patience in this video because I've just switched to using a Mac and it's got a Hungarian keyboard and uh, some of the keys are proving a little tricky to find. I'm just getting used to it. So um, I, I, must, I must ask your patience. Now um, I'm going to create a class here. Let's, let's define a class person, which uh, is something that I often use. And if I can find the right key, I'm going to put um, the opening and closing brackets in there. And let's give let's give person a couple of fields. So I'm going to say private int ID and private name, private string name. And I'll give it a constructor. So uh, I'll right click and go to source, generate constructor using fields. I tick the fields that I want to include as parameters to the constructor. Click OK. And let's get rid of this super, which is actually superfluous and I will do um, I think it's command shift F on the Mac or control shift F on Windows to format the code and I'll also give this a two string method so I'm going to right click and go to source generate two string tick the fields that I want to include and click OK so now we've got a person object and I'm going to create two of them and we're going to talk about how to compare those two person objects so let's say person, person1 equals new person. Uh, let's give it, give it an ID of five and a name of Bob. And person, person2 equals new person and an ID of eight and a name of Sue, let's say. So uh, are these two people um, I need to make that lower case actually there we go are these two people equal or not if we want to know whether they're equal or not we could we could do this we could say if person one equals equals person two in fact uh, I come to think of it rather than use an if I'll do something even simpler let's just do sys out or uh, sys o you can also type which also works and I think it's control space there we go uh, on a Mac just as it is on Windows and let's say person 1 equals equals person 2 so we're comparing them with equals equals and if I run this it's going to output false because they are clearly uh, different objects now what equals equals does is it tells you whether two references to objects are pointing at the same object or not or with integers or numeric values it tells you if um, if the, those primitive types, well with primitive types in general I guess, it tells you if, the, if they have the same value but with non-primitive types like this, references to objects it's telling you if they're pointing at the same object or not so if I now point person 2 at person 1 then it's gonna say that they are equal true down there now what we often want to do is we want to compare objects semantically so we've got some idea of uh, when two objects are equal that has nothing to do with, with whether they are literally the same object or not. For example, if a person object has the same ID and name, we might argue that they should be, in terms of meaning, they should be considered to be equal. And that's what our dot equals method is for. So uh, let's change them so that they're, they're both equal semantically in terms of meaning. So um, We've given them the same IDs and same names, but if I run this, equals equals still gives us false because these are two different objects, It's but it's just that nevertheless they contain the same information and semantically we feel that they are the same, but in terms of you know memory they are kind of physically two different objects. So how can we compare them in terms of meaning? And what we do is we use dot equals, which is a method uh, that all objects inherit, inherit 
from the object superclass object with a capital O, and we just we, we can just override this to provide our own interpretation of it. If I just run that, it's going to still say false because we haven't told dot equals how to compare the uh, the two objects, and we do that by overriding dot equals and implementing it ourselves. And the easiest way to do that is to right click in your class, go to source, uh, generate hash code and equals. And I'll, I'll talk about hash code briefly in a little while. And then tick the fields that you want to compare. So if you feel that two person objects with the same name are equal, regardless of ID, I would just tick name. Or if I felt that having the same ID meant they were equal regardless of name. I just tick uh, ID. Did I just say that right? Well, hopefully you get the idea um, that you need to tick the fields that are important in comparing the object. Um, if I feel that you, you two objects must have the same ID in this case and the same name in order to be considered equal, then I tick both. If you have a whole list of fields you only tick the ones that are important when you compare the objects, if you see what I mean. So I'll tick both here and I'll click OK. And it generates this dot equals method for me. And all this is doing is it's it's trying to compare, compare two objects efficiently. So it does a load of easy tests and the more lengthy tests it saves for if the easy tests uh, didn't work out. So this is kind of an optimized uh, method that really is just saying it's just saying is this object equal to this object and that's all it's doing and if you go through this you'll you'll kind of see how it works um, so i think I'll, I'll skip over it now but you, you can figure it out if, if you go through it it's, it's not too difficult especially if you follow the the videos so far in this series so now if i run this um, dot equals here is returning true because our objects um, are equal. And if I change um, name, for example, or ID, then they're going to be false because I've said, I tick both ID and name to say that they must have both the same ID and the same name to be considered equal. So that's a dot equals method for you. Uh, with integer types or like, well, with numeric types in general, you can just use equals equals. Uh, so, for example, let's use a non-primitive double type, let's say. So I can say double value 1 equals 7.2, exactly 7.2, and double value 2 equals 7.2. The exact value again, and let's do sysout uh, value 1 equals equals value 2. So you could use dot equals there. I'm pretty sure it would work. Um, and wow, I'm surprised actually. I thought this would work. And what do you know? It doesn't. So um, with, I think with, with integers, let's let's do integer value um, integer. Let's say number one equals six, and um, integer number two also equals six. So what do you think? Will this work or won't it? I think it will. So let's say number one equals equals number two. Let's run this. And it does work. Um, so why, why, does, why does this give us true, but this gives us false? And I think the reason is that um, Sometimes if you set an object to the same value uh, with integers, clearly this, this is true, then object uh, then Java will actually actually create a new object and use the same object for both of them. So these are literally pointing at the same object, but with doubles apparently to my surprise, it, it doesn't do that, um, which I guess is because uh, doubles are... Um, well, I don't know. I suppose they're just harder to compare because they contain more information. I don't know. But if you use dot equals with a double, then you should be all right, I should think. There we go. Now that's true. 
So you have to be a bit careful here. Um, equals equals is only checking if two objects are pointing literally at the same, two references are pointing literally at the same object. And the safe way is to use dot equals, which will tell you if they're equal in terms of value or not. Now, um, this is particularly tricky uh, when it comes to strings. And a classic beginner's mistake is to compare two strings with equals equals. So let's have two strings here. And now I feel I'm on safe ground because I've tried this before. So uh, string text one equals hello, let's say. And string text two equals hello as well. And um, let's let's try that. Let's say sysal uh, text one equals equals text two. Now, what do you think? Are those going to be equal or not? And in fact, this is a shortcut for new string, basically new string round brackets hello. And this is kind of an argument to the constructor. But the thing is, uh, if we run this, they are pointing at the same string. And that's because Java optimizes in this case, or at least this version of Java on this system certainly does, to point these two references at the exact same object. Now, the take home message here is don't compare non primitive numbers with equals equals. Only use equals equals to check if two things, two references point at literally the same object. And the same with strings. Always use dot equals to compare strings because this will play you false. Equals equals is only checking if these references are literally pointing at the same object or not. And to show you what I mean, let's add some uh, more characters to this and then let's do substring on it. So I'll say dot substring start index naught end index um, fifth character and then let's uh, do a sys out or you can just type sys o as people keep telling me I, I prefer sys out because it's just it rolls off my tongue easier but you can just type sys o control space now let's output text two text two and run this and what we find is that text two is equal to hello because we, we made it a bigger string than hello to start with, but then we only took the first five characters of that. So it is hello, and text one is equal to hello. And you see that equals equals is playing as false. Well, it's actually doing what it should do. It's telling us that these point now, these references point to two different objects in memory. And what you need to do is strings is it always use dot equals for that reason. Because with strings, sometimes equals equals will work. The reason being that Java will sometimes optimize to point to two different references at the same object if you literally initialize them with the same text. But you can't rely on that. Um, and what you really need to do is compare the strings semantically in terms of the, the data that they contain. And for that, you need dot equals. So equals equals is com for comparing uh, to see if you've got the same object, literally. Dot equals is for comparing in terms of meaning, which is what you pretty much always want with strings. And uh, as we've seen, you can implement your own uh, equals method just get it by getting your IDE to do it for you. That's the quickest way. I just want to very quickly um, mention this hash code method that was also generated for us. If you take a object that doesn't have a two string method, so uh, I don't know what a good um, example is here. Maybe uh, maybe I could just use a, a new object. Let's try this. Let's say sysal control space new object. I'm not sure if this will actually work, but I'll run that. Yeah, there we go. So you see an ID here. Um, if, if this had a two string method that actually uh, that would implement it to return something other than a default, then uh, we wouldn't see this. But by default, to string on a on an on an object that you've created yourself, or on this object, the grandparent object, outputs this stuff. And what this is is well, this is the class of the object, including the package that it's in. Well, that's just an at sign, and this looks like a memory address, but it's not. It's um, it's what's called a hash code. 
And hash codes are just kind of like unique IDs, or they usually should be unique, um, that each object has. And it, it's actually literally the value returned by this method here, by this hash code method. And it's only really used if you add your objects to a hash. And you, I talk about hashes in the collections uh, section of this tutorial. Um, if you're watching on Udemy or on YouTube, you can find my uh, collections tutorials um, separately on YouTube. But uh, that's what that is. It's a hash code, which is kind of like a unique ID that you only need to necessarily worry about. You only need to implement this method uh, using the automatic ID technique that I showed you earlier. If you're going to use your object as a key in a hash or you're going to put it in a set or something like that, um, and this is, this is that number that this method returns, which is supposed to be unique for every object. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, this, this is actually something I should have gone over a long time ago. And it's a kind of classic interview question. And in fact, a friend of mine was interviewing someone a while ago and he said that he didn't give the guy the job because he, he was asked, what is dot equals? What does it do? And the guy couldn't reply. Funny thing is, when my friend asked me the same question, I couldn't reply either because I was confused by him saying dot equals. And I thought he meant like an operator like this, whoops, with a, a dot sign and, a, and it equals like that. Um, but no, he was just, whoops, I don't know why Eclipse is doing that. But anyway, he meant this, the equals method, and it's uh, often referred to as dot equals because, of course, there's a dot um, in front of it because that's how you, you uh, use methods. So um, the name of it is equals, but, of course, it always has a dot before it, like, you know, it's a dot substring, you could say. So it's something to be aware of that um, on exams and interviews, this question comes up, what does dot equals do or what does equals do and what do you use it for? That's it for today um, or that's it for this video. And until next time, happy coding.